All right, this meeting is being recorded so that at a later date, our information technology department can upload it to the Town of Amherst um, YouTube channel. And my camera is off today because I am working from home. Okay, thank you, Angela. So we're meeting virtually pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. And I'm gonna ask each of you to register your presence vocally so we know that you can hear and be heard. So Anika. Yeah. Uh, Alex Lopez. Here. And Alex Lefebvre is present, so. Um, great, so the first item on our agenda is approval of the minutes of March 22nd, 2022. Oh, hey, Austin, we just started. Can you hear me, Austin? Cool, all right. So uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes of March 22nd? Motion to approve the, the minutes. Great, is there a second? Second. Great, any discussion of the minutes? Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll go ahead and take a vote. Um, Anika? Yes. Alex? Yes. And Austin? Yes. And Alex uh, Lefebvre is a yes. So the main thing on our agenda today is the May, 1, uh, May 1st community outreach event. Um, and I wanted to, as a preface to that conversation, there were two questions that this committee asked of the Jones Library Building Committee to help us sort of move forward. And I wanted to, um, since not everybody uh, on this subcommittee was able to attend the main meeting, the last one we had, I just wanted to um, relay that information. So um, one of the questions is, um, we had wanted the OPM to talk about what the public can influence around public outreach. And so the comment that we got back was that, especially at this stage in the process, very early on, we wanna collect as much information as possible, but with the understanding that not everything that's being suggested is going to affect the building. Um, and so um, in, in doing this, it's an opportunity for outreach and design to call through the feedback of the public. And then if, for example, we're receiving a lot of community feedback let's just say for you know a sensory room for you know people on the autism spectrum i'm just randomly throwing something out there um, it then guides the focus and attention for the continuation of the design of developing the designs for the library and so uh, what uh, the opm talked about was essentially making sure we have a clear structure for areas where the community can give feedback and those areas where things can't be changed so for example the square footage of the building is the square footage of the building that's not going to change significantly and so getting commentary that we think the library should be smaller isn't going to be productive for the community and that's just setting up an expectation that you know we, we don't want to do um there's also um some minimum things that we've uh committed to the library committed to around sustainability um and so you know, anything more than that is certainly a conversation for the community, but we certainly can't decide to suddenly not have the sustainability pieces that we committed to. Um, the historic preservation um, also has some sort of minimum levels like the sustainability. Um, the exterior of the 1928 portion of the building has a historic preservation restriction agreement um, on it. So we cannot, uh, no matter how much we would want to do certain things around the library, uh, you know, relative to the exterior, because we are required to maintain that. And also um, anything relative to that would have to be approved by the historic commission. And the other piece of that is that we are pursuing a fair bit of money uh, with Massachusetts historic tax credits. And so the requirements of the state to actually receive those tax credits are going to guide a lot of also what can be done. So anytime we're sort of talking about those areas, I think it's important that the public understand that there are certain parameters around those pieces. Um, and then we have an existing building program in place. Um, so, and I think that was sort of where the, the May 1st event, we got around sort of the idea of these, having these programming tables. And so those would be our, our actually our, our different program, building elements, program uh, spaces, and so getting feedback on what those spaces should look like, feel like, et cetera. Um, so to that end, at our last meeting, we had talked about a May 1 event um, that got signed off by the Jones Library Building Committee as a go forward. Um, based on the feedback um, from this committee, 
Um, the structure that's being contemplated is an open house uh, from 12 to 2 on May 1st. And we did 12 to 2 because there is another event going on in town. Um, May 1, 2 to 5 on the town common is the Linguistic Diversity Day. It's the final celebration of Linguistic Heritage Month. And so the idea was that people could go straight from this event to that event, which is providing food. <laughs> and it's with families of uh, kids from the school. Um, so uh, what was discussed was having an open house where we would have each program element. Um, and I think per Anika's suggestion, it's basically an opportunity for community to come in, uh, get information, talk to other community members, get excited, get information. And so to that end, we are looking at staffing each station with uh, a library staff or committee member of some sort, um, but then also members of the community who either have a particular expertise, passion, et cetera, um, with that particular program. Um, so I think that's the big picture, unless Anika, you wanna add anything to that? I think you've got that covered. Okay, so I think um, some of the key things we want to do today is go through what was in the meeting packet was sort of the, the tables, the building program elements. Is there anything we're missing from that? Um, and then also, I think we have 14 tables assigned. I don't know if we want a 15th one as like the information, like if people want to go and ask questions about what is the committee, what's the process, you know, getting those kinds of, of details. Um, and then the library started reaching out to community members, staff members, and committee members to see whether or not um, they could come in and you know, work these tables. Um, so we have a lot of tables to fill. So a lot of suggestions needed from either us or the community about who might be interested in coming in to play that role. Um, and then talking about you know, how are we advertising for this? What do we want to have at each table? Sort of all of those details. So with that, I'm going to see if anyone has an idea, like anywhere you want to start here. <laughs> oh, we lost Alex. Oh, he's back. Welcome back, Alex. <laughs> I can give a, a, a taste just um, for who's uh, reach, been reached out to so far. Um, so yes, I love this idea of merging uh, the community members either with interest and or passion with you know library staff. I think that that is going to expand our audience a great deal. Um, we may have Dr. Milkar Shabazz join us today. I know he's trying to, and he's um, absolutely inter he's interested in being a part of special collections uh, table as a as a historian. Um, I know that uh, my mother Deborah Bridges is also, you know, was asked and is, is interested to come over there as well. Uh, so that could be a fun combination. I've also um, another longtime generational family member that I have on the radar who I hope will join us. Um, I also did speak earlier with community member Meg Gage who was interested in helping out and uh, with a table. Um, so I just myself have been talking to, you know, different community members around that are, you know, have different interests, um, you know, so we can bring in uh, as, as much diversity around that with people who not only have um, different interests that all really intersect with what the library has to offer, um, but also, you know, are able, they'll be able to reach out to different areas of community and whether that is reintroducing them to what's going on with the library and bringing them in as well as uh, new folks as well. So um, I think that, you know, especially once, um, you know, these folks are, are better engaged, once we have invitations, once we have at least like, let's say the date or, or a flyer it will be really helpful and I think we'll move um, because we, you know, everyone that I've talked to is really interested in this. So it's a matter of some of them coordinating, does that day work for them and get back? So, I mean, we may end up having a list longer than the tables that we have, but that's great. So. <laughs> Thanks. I just wanted to ask um, if there were opportunities for us to also involve, uh, our school librarians um, and use ARPS as a, 
uh, means to get the word out to families. Yeah, ab absolutely. I don't think we've, we haven't talked yet about the advertising piece, um, but yeah, I think any, any means necessary. I know um, in the Jones Library Building Committee meeting that we had, um, the town manager and finance director had talked about also um, one using, using the town websites, but then also to the extent that we could use the schools and their outreach. Um, I think we talked about the superintendent newsletter that goes out every Friday. Um, you know, I don't know if we, it's a fairly long letter. I don't, you know, we need to get above, above Amherst Survival Center and, and maybe in between soccer. I don't know. That's where in the newsletter, but yeah, absolutely. Um, Alex, I think that's, that's good. Um, so I guess from this committee, do, do we, one, do we want to look at the different program tables and comment on those? Do we want to leave that up to sort of what the library's created? Um, it's, it's essentially all of our programs, plus we added a dream board. And the idea for the dream board is, you know, if, if you, those are the places to put the, the ideas that are likely not going to go into the, into the building. They may not affect the building, but who knows? They might. I mean, if enough people in the community are saying one thing and it makes sense and it's doable, then, you know, who knows? We, we don't, you know, we, we want to get that, that feedback, but putting it in a place where the public understands that this is sort of a dream board, not a, if I write it on here, it should happen kind of thing. Would it make sense to have the like parameters board or parameters table maybe next to that, just as a reminder of, you know, where the, the ins and outs are? Sure. Be, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like to do that so that's clear. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm gonna add on to Anika's, um, some of the people that we've reached out to at the library. Um, so one of the elements that will be more developed in the new library space is sort of the social work literacy um, area. And so I don't know how much people realize that we have a space for a social worker in residence. Um, uh, Earl Miller, the new head of Cress, has already come to the library and talked about being in the library and is actually gonna be doing a lot of things with the library. And so Earl Miller is actually gonna come be at that table as well to sort of talk about um, the CREST program and how it will work with the library, um, as well as hopefully somebody from the Literacy Project, which will also relocate uh, there, but they have a fundraiser the same day, so that may not be a possibility. Um, and we have, for Universal Design, we have somebody from um, the Disability Access Advisory Committee in town who's agreed to come, as well as some community members uh, who have a lot of experience and passion around um, uh, around the need for accessible and universal design. So we have a lot of people who have uh, interest, but we also have a lot of blank spaces to fill. So I think part of our what we need to be doing is figuring out how to reach into the community to get more people coming to help out to make it really a community event. I know that we'll reach out to pretty much every town organization and um, that we have, and I'm also noticing that we have Goodwin Memorial AME Church with us. And so that could be, you know, another avenue to reach out to um, different churches and community center, the Jewish community center, this could all be right way. And if we have, like, I know we will have uh, social media flyers, but if we're able to have maybe a printed flyer, at least a few um, that could go into different places. I know, well, not everyone is, is open, but those who are open, that could help. So I guess I just want to throw out to the group. I mean, what, you know, Alex, what do you, if at all, like, what do you envision? So it's an open house. We're going to have it for two hours from 12 to one. We're going to have children's programming, which will act as childcare. We couldn't do it the whole two hours, but we figured an hour is, is great. Um, you know, so somebody walks in, it's an open house. They could spend 20 minutes. They could spend all two hours wandering from table to table. Um, do we as a committee care where the tables are placed? Do we want to leave that up to the library? Uh, what do we like? Do we want there to be a map? Do we want to leave that up to the library? Like, do we, how much do we want to sort of uh, outline versus how much do we want to just say to the the library? You know, it's an open house. These are the tables. Go. What are what are people thinking? <laughs> and what does it look like when you go in at a table? Is there a flip chart? Are there stickies? You know, are people going to have, I mean, do people have thoughts about how we prepare our community volunteers who are coming in 
what to expect, what we want them to do, what's their goal. I personally feel it's their house. Um, they probably would I know the best setup as long as and they would know for it to be accessible. I think signage um, and being clear for, you know, there will be some people who might want to do the rounds and check out every table and then some that may just want to go to their points of interest. So um, I think if, you know, it, it's clear to allow people to linger or be in and out, whichever they have uh, the time for would be great. But I think, um, I mean, if we look, but I think it might be a little difficult for us here to tell how to set up the tables. I, I would trust that they would set them up in the best way possible. Alex, you have any thoughts or ideas? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, uh, to the question of like, what does what does it look like in my head is like, it starts with a lot of blank pieces of paper and it ends with a lot of full pieces of paper. Um, and I trust that, I trust our community will be able to fill up as much as we can give them space to. And so let's challenge ourselves to give them as much space as possible. Um, you know, I think just on the dream, uh, the sort of like wish list um piece if there's a way for us to set it up so that that's the last thing um i think it's a really good way for us to check in with ourselves of did we capture as much as possible um sort of if the wish list is super full at the end of the night then we probably can take a look to see what we missed right if the wish list is pretty empty because people have gotten their uh thoughts in the other 14 tables then we've got a pretty good grasp of where we're eliciting feedback, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yes. Do we have any, I mean, this uh, is what, three, three and a half, almost a month out. Um, do we have any sort of minimums as a committee um, that we want to sort of try to commit to when we have an event? And I'm thinking things like the childcare that we're providing, um, obviously, the library is conveniently located on public transportation. So to some extent that, that takes care of the transportation issue, um, you know, translation services. I mean, are there any sort of minimums that we want to, and that could be through volunteers in the community. Um, we have a really strong ESL program, you know, who knows? Um, so are there anything that we sort of want to make sure that is happening whenever we do an event? Are you talking about just any event that we do specifically at the library or? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime we're doing a community outreach event, do we sort of have like a minimum that we want to ensure that we can have the, as many people in the community participate as possible and removing as many barriers as possible? I think that, um, the I think the childcare was a great idea. Um, I mean, childcare refreshments, um, you know, I mean, seating, I think that that would be um, probably taken care of with, the, with uh, the library, maybe not as much so uh, if we do something that is out, out within the community, um, which I do think at, at some point that we should think about actually going out into the community as well. Maybe, you know, as we discussed before, partnering with um, in events that are already going on somewhere and, um, you know, help, helping them out and having a presence there as well. Refreshments are always nice. I mean, that that's always <laughs> draw people. I think if you, the information refreshments, making sure it's accessible and, you know, update is great. And I think also carrying on from this um, May 1st event, um, hopefully utilizing and having some of these community members carry that on with us. So as we are, going to other events, we're just kind of bringing that whole community feel with us and um, hopefully having us as well being invited to come and to come to other events and partner to get the word out as well. So one of the things I was thinking about, and I would be interested to hear from everybody else about each table um, is 
large blank pieces of paper for Alex, um, but also maybe um, a place where people can sign up and leave their contact information. Like I want anytime anything's happening on teens, like I want to be there or, you know, it just gives people an opportunity to either sign up generally or sign up to, keep, to stay informed about that specific program. So a sign up sheet. Um, and I also thought it might be nice for each table to have maybe a little bit of information about the program. Like for example, you know, uh, you know, right now, uh, social worker in residence, there's no square footage because they're, you know, <laughs> we, we don't have it, but it'll be 104 square feet once it's done or, you know, something to give people an idea of, uh, you know, now this is what we have, this is what's being um, envisioned. So. You're not just saying we have a teen space, but you're saying it's a teen space that's X square feet, which I think helps people maybe a little bit in terms of understanding what's currently being visioned and what they can add on to or give more details. Yeah, makes sense. I just want to say uh, kudos to all those people who have a lot better spatial visualization than I do, because uh, square footage is not my strong suit um and i really appreciate the way that that it's played or that it uh has been supported and, and talked about here um one thing that just on like the norms one thing that i want to say is that i i sort of want to push ourselves to like with each event try to and try something new in our invitation or advertisement um and so that we're not just advertising in the same places to the same people, um, but that we're being conscious of what is one new thing we're gonna try so that we potentially reach a new demographic. Um, and specifically one, one that I wanna just keep bringing up is like, uh, how do we reach out to those people who felt that they were um, excluded from the conversation, right? And would the, with the folks who uh, were talking a lot about this, but from the side of not wanting to see it um, be renovated, come and give their ideas in this moment. Do you have any thoughts, Alex, about how to do that? I mean, ostensibly someone was putting up signs that said vote no. Um, and those people have a list of where they dropped off their signs, I would imagine. And so if we could reach out to that person and say, we'd like to, you know, we want to open this event up to you and your folks. And like, this is a reality for our future. Um, we, we want this to be a conversation and not just amongst people who voted just for it. And on a positive note, we have at least two of those people who are, you know, in support and will be helping with the tables for the May 1st event. So I think that that's also uh, will be helpful to start that. And I, I definitely agree with you with the visuals. I'm a very visual person, but like, I know sometimes when people hear like a hundred square, I'm not necessarily like a square foot visual person, but I know that when people sometimes hear like a hundred square feet, they're like, that sounds so small. But then it's like, if you have a visual and they're like, these are usually for spaces where it's one-on-one, -on -one, then, you know, they can see like a, this as an intimate space, which, which then makes sense. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I mean, I'm sure if we're having all this, maybe like the, um, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a map, right? Well, I, I shouldn't say I'm sure. But if there is a map of the building, kind of where the, the programs are, maybe, you know, color coded where people can get an idea. So, so here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> so, um, so there is a schematic design that was created by the architects back in 2016. <laughs> when, thank you. <laughs> it's been long, but not that long. <laughs> in 2016, that was submitted with the application. Um, and that had all of the program elements in certain places. Um, and then the sustainability committee um, requested changes around creating a net zero ready building, but also the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners wanted our large meeting room relocated to a different space. And as the largest room in the building, everything shifted. So our current schematic design is just that. So, I mean, at one of the, the schematic design I think I provided in the last meeting packet was that design with the library actually 
putting their own ideas. So things aren't settled at this point. And it, that's exactly, I guess, the point of talking to the public. Like the public's not gonna inform where things go in the building because that's a jigsaw puzzle left to the architects and the library in terms of what works best. But we don't necessarily have uh, we, we don't have a schematic where we can say this is where it's going to be located because that's all still going to be sorted out. That's part of the process that we're going through right now is ultimately where things go. But we do know the rough square footage of it. Um, so I'm not sure. We will get to a point where we can show pictures. <laughs> we're just not necessarily there yet, I don't mm -hmm. think. I think if we have library staff, as long as the as long as the folks who are at the tables have all the tools that they need to best communicate and you know answer questions within reason and and they're aware of where the parameters are and I I, I would imagine that so because they would have uh, someone from staff with them as well. Um, but if if um, if people are spread out and we have more tables, I think is. As long as people have as much, in, they're armed, empowered with as much information as possible, I'd imagine that. Because this is especially the first one and formal, and as we move on, I think we'll have more concrete information. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think just having having clipboard um, for the staff to be able to take people's information um, for when they need to follow up with someone is going to be really important because. I know I often hear someone say something at this sort of thing, and then I'm like, I think I get that. And then on Monday, I'm like, what was that? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I guess relative to the May 1 event, um, Anika's working on the invite. Um, and then also, Anika, you've had some conversations. I guess we've had some conversations with the community participation officers. I don't know if you wanna share a little bit about that, where you are. Sure. So yes. Yeah, so uh, we did have a, a great conversation with a community participation officer and and many other things. Um, Brianna, uh, Rather Town Hall. That was a really nice conversation. Uh, she was also she's willing to help us as much as, as she can, time allotted. And she was talking about a program that I believe she'll come in and talk with us about because I don't, I will mess up the name and all of the other things, but. Um, this program basically provides additional tools uh, for outreach that just make it more convenient for people and accessible for people to be able to participate um, within um, online meetings. So, um, and then just in general, for outreach getting word out. So I think that will be very beneficial for us. Um, we also have Jennifer Moyston who is going to be scheduling a meeting um, with all of the CPOs, which will be helpful. Um, and um, so that I, I think that that's going to be exciting for us. Um, and then there's also Sammy the Owl, who I was introduced to today. And uh, Sharon Chair was just, was great about that. She just she asked for input, and she has a, a youth group that you know will be kind of Sammy will have a spring makeover, and um, yeah, so have like just some pop and whatever. And hopefully that's something that. You know we can interchange kind of keeping that uh, fresh with um, invites, but then bringing it back and then connectedness uh, of the um, of Sammy and I, I was quite excited to to learn the author and I'm, I'm a fan um, and the illustrator. So I think that this is you know just a community like this is you know I'm an illustration from the community about um, the library. I think that's great. We're also looking at images of um, there was a, a tree with hands, this type of thing, like that that was uh, growing. And I think, you know, that could be more of our motto, so to speak, or, or metaphor, because we have this expanded, growing new library. And we're, you know, we're definitely tasked for expanding the audience and the community that will utilize the library and fill it up. So uh, I think that will be great. And was there? Um, I also wanted to point out that the group that um, Brianna will be introducing us to, they were specifically introduced, interested rather in working with us. So I think uh, the community participation officers, in addition to the community that we're working out with that's in different areas, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, we're in a better place, like a much more place, 
of action. Like I, I feel action now around this. So I think that's great. Thanks. Um, so before I move on to the next agenda item, I guess I want to just check in with this group and find out um, are, are folks comfortable with Anika rolling with the invite and then, um, you know, we're going to use, uh, you know, the schools, the community participation officers, uh, the uh, community partners of the library, as well as volunteers. I mean, I don't, I don't know the extent to which this community wants to sort of like sign off on the flyer or or who the initial like who the initial outreach goes to or whether you know uh, we let the library do its outreach plus what we're doing and sort of see where we are and then as Alex said at the next meeting we see you know how do we maybe need to communicate differently or do things differently. Um, do we need to meet again to plan further May 1 or do we have, have we, do we feel like we've said enough about what we want to see happen? Austin. Thanks, Alex. Um, I want to go back to the point that I think both Anika and Xander made. And that is the question of uh, how much is it going to mean to anybody to say it's 150 square feet? So the question that I'd like to just return to is whether or not the existing schematic designs as tentative and revised as they are gonna be, should be there. They're on the library website. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just think it would be helpful to people, you know, with all the qualifications that things are gonna move to get a sense of what it is that people were imagining um, in the first phase of the schematics. Um, and I think you might want to talk with Sharon and, you know, get her thoughts about this. But I just worry that if there's no nothing there, I mean, I, you know, speaking for myself, I think I'm best able to begin with something mm -hmm. and then react to it as opposed to just tell us what you want in the room. Having an image of what that room looks like and where it is, you know, located, though it might change, might be helpful. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Anyone else comments before on May 1? I agree uh, with what um, Austin just said, because I think, you know, when you look at, you know, some of the best visioning sessions happen when there's either a, whether it's a virtual or a model of what you're talking about. So even, you know, if, if it isn't perfect something where you could get an idea of it, at least be descriptive of what that's like, because, you know, for a lot of people, you're right, if you just tell them square footage, it doesn't really, it doesn't mean anything. Um, so I think that's possible. Um, and my concern, if we, I think it might be helpful um, I don't know if we have to schedule a meeting on this date, but if we have a good amount of community members that are ready and willing to participate, it might be helpful to have a meeting, um, to hear their thoughts and just kind of be on the same page before the event to hear their questions if they have any and ensure that all of the tables are set up. Yeah, I agree. Anything else? I guess the only other thing that I just want to name is um, May 1st, it, I used to be a union organizer, May 1st is International Workers Day. Um, and so I have not been part of the labor movement in Western Mass enough to know if that uh, is going to clash with anything that is planned elsewhere, um, but just wanted to acknowledge that uh, in a previous life in Chicago, if you had tried to reach me on May 1st, you would not. Okay. Duly noted. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. I think at this point, uh, I think we have enough people with it penciled on their calendar that we should move forward, but I, that's good to know. <laughs> um, okay. So the next item on the agenda was just talking a little bit about a preliminary outreach plan. So we know, um, oh, the last thing I wanted to say too was that um, 
we also will at some point circle back with the OPM prior to this event, um, just to make sure that we sort of have everything we need from the OPM, you know, they, they, they will be working with us as well in terms of just information and how we're communicating to the public and documents and things like that. So um, preliminary outreach plan. So over the next uh, four to six months, let's say, this is what made me think of the OPM is because that will date will, will be more certain, um, is really probably the most critical time to be meeting with the public in terms of where uh, the most public feedback can be incorporated into the designs um, because the further along we get, the tighter the designs get and the less room there is for feedback. So recognizing that, um, I wanted to get a sense of what the community or what this group uh, envisions over the next four to six months, you know, frequency of how many events do we want to try and do? Uh, are they online versus out in person? Are they some at the library, some out in the community? Um, are there, you know, what should we be using these meetings that we're having, you know, part of the meeting for admin and part as a community outreach session. And so just want to get some thoughts and feedback around sort of the next six months. And if people have thoughts about that. I um, think that while we, um, during this time where there's as much flexibility and, and freedom, so to speak, with this, that we would probably, I would, I would think, have more meetings um, to, this is also engaging, creating um, larger uh, email lists and getting people's information. And as we move forward where we're moving more to passing along the information, back and forth and where we're, you know, getting getting tighter in terms of what can and cannot happen and having to make decisions, then, you know, Zoom or this type of meeting that's more administrative administrative rather would become more appropriate. Okay. And appropriate, more frequent. Alex or Austin, you guys have any thoughts? Sure, I, um, I, I agree. I think we ought to meet as uh, much as possible and in many places as possible. We ought to be going to rather than having people coming to. Um, it's a good start to have them come to, but it's really good to go to. The thing that was in my head is that um, the process right will be iterative at some point uh, the in the design development schematic and then the design development choices are going to have to be made. Um, and we'll want to engage people in a conversation about, we thought we could do this and this, but maybe we can only do this. Um, and uh, I think we want to keep that in mind that, that as we go on, we want to make sure that people are helping us when the choices need to be, um, need to be made. And working, as you said, with the OPM to get a clear sense of what that timeline is, mm -hmm. I think is the key to guiding what, what, how the outreach process should look as we go, as we go forward. Yeah, and my understanding, that's what I was uh, incredibly inarticulately trying to say a minute ago, was <laughs> that the OPM, before this May 1 event, we will have a better sense of the timeline. And so our information table will have some of the information that we don't quite have yet um, because at the last meeting, um, the committee voted to authorize the town manager to move forward with the designer, which is sort of the thing we've been waiting to do for the process to get going, so. Um. Yeah, I would just say um, we should be able to tell people on May 1st when the next meeting is and where it's gonna be um, so that we keep building from one thing to another. Uh, and I, I love the idea, Austin, of having it move to different places. So also um, somewhere in that, in each event, giving ourselves the space to capture, would you be interested in having a outreach subcommittee meeting near you? Okay. 
Um, so we have um, six people in the audience today, um, one who has a hand raised, but um, I, I know we were hoping to have some folks in the audience today because we'd love some public feedback um, or thoughts around either the May 1 event, future events, what people would like to see, what would be helpful, um, that kind of thing. So um, with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and if, if someone wants to participate and provide some information or has a question, just go ahead and raise your hand. Um, and Angela, can you let in Cami, which looks like you have already done that. So Cami, you're in the room. You just need to unmute. There you go. There we go. Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, are you yourself? only because I raised my hand earlier? I'm sorry. Yeah, your I, hand. I'm so sorry. I just missed my husband for the first time. Are you responding as I raised my hand earlier? Uh, your hand was up, and we were to public comment, and we're inviting anybody. Uh, oh, in, good. In, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I um. Well, I I passingly when we're talking about advertising this event, I hadn't heard you mention the friends, and so I'm here to be uh, manning a table on the disability uh, access, availability and accessibility for the disabled community. But also um, if there's things like refreshments or talking about um, outreach, definitely I'm happy to, to discuss this with the, fr the friends at our next meeting, but um, they should be in on this if they aren't already. Yes, thank you. No, that's an excellent point, which I did not mention. Um, I did mention uh, this to, yes, I have made that comment about the friends and we were, I think, just sort of getting a, a loose date. But just kidding. I can take this to Marion is the new president Perfect. and um, we can get like, would we like to have if the friends is great for uh, trying to organize sort of welcoming or even staffing it a little bit to direct people or um, or have a bake sale or something like that. Um, as cheesy as that might sound, that may not be what we're looking for, but they're often good for that. Anyone right. uh, comment, thoughts? I, I think the friends are wonderful. We definitely want to have all of the friends involved in this for sure. So uh, they could be in, in, involved in some at some other level. But anyway, if if that was um, wanted, uh, they could do that. Yeah. I, I, Absolutely. Go ahead, Anika. And that was it. Thank you. That was all. Yeah. No. If you if you want to um, take that back to the friends, um, I, I'm as as long as the library is okay with refreshments. I assume that would be out on the lawn kind of thing, like refreshments stay outside. I don't know exactly what that looks like yet. You would probably be better organized. I also know that we still are predominantly masked in the library. It's optional, but most people do mask in the library. Um, you know what? It might be too complicated this time around. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, so maybe we don't do the refreshments for this one. Maybe that's a, when we go out to the community, we make sure we have refreshments. Um, but, but definitely to the extent that the friends are interested in helping us to staff the tables um, and in outreach, that is 100% uh, desirable welcome and and would be fabulous okay so um so that's another conversation to um get specifics on what you're looking for i think they'd love to uh and and i'll just do a little outreach before our next meeting and find out what what tables need staffing or what could be helpful there great that would be perfect thank you Okay. Thanks, Cami. Appreciate it. And anyone else out in the audience have anything they want to questions, thoughts? Okay. Seeing no hands. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I think those are the main things that we wanted to cover today. Um, and is there an interest in using these meetings as we go forward as maybe part of the meeting being sort of the administrative thing and part of it being inviting community or uh, people 
or into this meeting um, to discuss different program elements. Um, for example, you know, inviting uh, whether, you know, it's Anika's mom or, or Earl Miller to come in and sort of talk about, you know, what, what things would look like in either special collections or, or I don't know if there's an interest in sort of using these meetings as community outreach, not just 100%, you know, administrative. I think so. We're engaged. I think, oh, sorry, Anika, my apologies. No, it's okay. I was just saying, I, I agree. I think it's more engaged way to connect people, introduce people, you know? I mean, we can be building community and, and doing outreach. Like, well, I think we should. Like, we should be doing outreach within the meeting. And I think that's an excellent way to do it. Yeah, I was going to say, I could even imagine um, using, sort of using the people who are staffing the tables, uh, or not using the people, but um, empowering the people who are staffing the tables to report back um, in future meetings, um, knowing that we probably wouldn't be able to hear from all 14 of them uh, in just one meeting. But if we can break that out um, so that we're getting not only those who have uh, volunteered to lend their expertise, but also um, to capture what they heard from the community as well. Um, I think it might be a really good way for us to stay in touch with everyone. That's a great idea. That could be our next meetings, like the next two, three, depending on you know how many people there are inviting them, um, and whatever the whatever the topics are, can be in that meeting. Um, and then just on a, on a side note, our, uh, oh, it's not the next meeting. Okay. I'm, I'm going to be gone for one of our meetings. So I just, somebody will have to report in to I'll be April break. <laughs> I will not be here. So, um, okay, good. Um, unless anyone has anything else they want to, I think we're, we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting. To okay. Close. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you to the women. Thank you, Anika, for everything. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Austin. <laughs> We're Thank adjourned. You, Alex. We're adjourned. Bye. <laughs>